Hey everybody, Goat from Goat and Hog here, back with another video guide for our Diablo 3 Ultimate Evil Edition. And I want to cover in this one some more advanced stats. We're going to go a little farther than the basic stats of your dexterity, your intelligence, your vitality. And we're going to move on to some of the other stuff. Now I, this next part here, the sword, the shield, and the plus plus that you see right above the strength, dexterity, intelligence, vitality. That I covered in the basic stats on the text version of it that you see our link to in the description but uh, I forgot about it when I did that so I want to cover that real quick and tell you what those are now the sword the 2650 that you see here that is your damage and that is drawn from how much damage you do and that's calculated based on your weapons damage amount the attack speed the critical hit chance how much critical hitch damage you do and you know your primary stat like in the case of the witch doctor the int that all combined together gives you a damage number. Now that is a very good number to work with as you get rolling. But once you get a little more complicated into things, once you get up there in the torment difficulties, that number isn't always the best thing to be paying attention to. Some of these other stats are. I'll cover that in a minute. Next up, let's move over to the shield. You see 9239 for me. And that is your defense. It used to be, or I'm sorry, it's your toughness as they call it. It used to be just your armor in the original Diablo 3, but here it is your toughness, and now that is drawn from your armor, your health, your resistances, and your dodge rating, and, you know, your dexterity effects in your dodge rating. So that is roughly how much damage you can take, how much you can deal with. And again, that's another rough number to work with, very good as you get rolling, but later on you'll want to look into what exactly it is that you need to boost that number, and while the number may be bigger with one item, it may help with resistance and bring down your total armor and it help you out better in the long run. Okay, let's move over to 89 there. You see the 2++. plus plus. That one wasn't very descriptive. It used to be just straight how much life you have. And what it is now is that's healing. And that is based on your life per hit, your life per second, your damage at, or life after a kill, and your life um, bonus from potions and globes. And that is basically your healing. It's how much health you can get back. Again, a rough number, something to work with to get a good feel, but you'll want to dig into the complex stats. So where do you see these complex stats? Well, first off, you're going to see it here on the weapons themselves uh, and the other items. You see here on my main equipped weapon, one of the extra stats besides the damage and the intelligence is plus 16 experience per kill. Well, you want to be able to keep track of all these different things. There's uh, life per hit, that's a healing thing. Your gold from monsters and things like that. Uh, another interesting one here, plus nine poison skill damage. Uh, there's life per second. But anyways, you know, they all add up and you wonder where is all that at? Well, you see at the very bottom character details. It's the X button on the play, or I'm sorry, on the Xboxes. Uh, on Playstations it'll be another one, but it'll be listed right there. We bring that up and you can see here we'll get more in-depth of what's going on. There are the total that you have for your stats. There's that damage number a little more into it and it tells you there, we'll scroll it with the triggers, and there it is what I was talking about, your different bonuses for your damage and everything, uh, your offense, where it's drawing it from, and telling you why. So let's get down here, there's the critical hit. Now critical hit's actually pretty important, a lot of builds end up getting based on you want to boost your critical hit to chance first. Once you get your critical hit chance up, then you can boost the amount of damage you do. Uh, for those critical hits. Those are things you're looking for that boost your damage more than just straight damage numbers and more than your primary stat. So you'll see a lot of later builds people are trying to get critical hit chance which is often referred to as CC critical chance or CHC and you'll see CD or CHD as critical hit damage. So green gems are going to boost the amount of critical hit damage you do in your weapons. And after a while, once your chance is high enough, a red gem isn't that useful. Because while you'll be doing more damage overall, if you're doing enough critical hits, you're going to boost the amount of overall damage you do. So that's important. The jingling in the background is my dog being fussy back there. I do apologize. Uh, cooldown reduction, you can get that from different parts of your armor. Also, a gem in the head is nice for that. Because a lot of abilities, they're powerful, so what they do, instead of giving you a resource cost, they set a 15, 20, 1 minute, whatever, cooldown time. The longer the cooldown time, the more any percentage of this will shave off in seconds. So, it can be very handy to boost your cooldown reduction 
to get to the more powerful skills more often. Now remember my Squirt's Necklace had the poison damage increase of 9%, so you see that here. That is what's called elemental damage increases that you'll see on weapons and items. And some very advanced builds to run the higher level of difficulties, you'll pick one particular damage type and try to stick with it on all your abilities and all your damage bonuses to give you more damage. It won't be listed necessarily as a damage bonus in your damage number, but overall you'll see you're doing a whole lot more damage because you're boosting that percentage and all your special abilities will take advantage of that. So that's something to keep in mind and keep an eye out for as you move up there. Uh, blocking, that'll happen if you have shields, dodge chance, you can see it's drawn from a dexterity. Damage reduction, now this is a function of armor as you can read there. The more armor you have, the less damage you'll take from anything around your level. And considering that everything pretty much scales to around your level, that's important. This is a handy way of going, okay, I'm going to get an extra 150 armor. Well, what is that going to do for me? Put that, you know, check this number first, put that item on, come and check again. See exactly how much of a change you're going to have here. Is it worth it based on your other stats? Uh, resistances here, you'll see all these from physical resistance all the way down to arcane slash holy resistance. Those are in addition to your armor. So these are, when you see something that says, an item says plus five holy damage resistance or arcane resistance or lightning resistance, those will start modifying these numbers. So you can see here, I have an intelligence based guy, so character, so int boosts this. So I'm going to have my resistances being pretty high. My armor might be lower but my resistances will be higher. It's kind of the trade-off. But, again, as you work your way higher into the difficulty levels, you're going to want to be paying attention to this stat to keep those resistances up so that you're taking less damage from all the different effects that things are giving you. As they get more and more special abilities, the special mobs do, you want to be taking less damage from them. Uh, crowd control reduction, that is, as you see, from stun, slow, freeze, fear, charm. That is, again, something you can pick up on items. You might even have... I don't think there are any skills that actually affect that. The damage reductions from missile and melee, there are some special skills that will take care of that and some specific items. Thorns. What thorns damage is, you don't see that listed anywhere else, but when somebody says, hey, this is... 10% damage is done to melee attackers. Well, there you go. Or, you know... 500 damage done to ranged attackers. This is where you're going to find that, in there in the thorn section. Uh, your life, your bonuses for life. This is the area you're going to affect for your healing. Uh, the life per hit, life per kill, life bonuses from the globe. Uh, healing bonuses. Sorry, I'm stuttering there as I'm reading two different things. Um, up here at the top, the maximum life. That's something that's going to boost that toughness stat, as we talked about. So th just digging in here is a great way to find out more about what's going on to your character. That's what I'm trying to get at. As you get higher in levels, come in here and check things out. If you plateau, kind of like, why can't I get past Torment 1? Well, hey, maybe you have a huge hole to fire resistance. Check your gear. Go do some enchanting. Farm around for a little better gear that does more fire resistance. Take into account what skills you have that can boost these sort of things. These advanced stats are what's going to get you into the higher level of difficulty. Also a, handle, a handy thing to look at on the right side, the status effects. You see I have no buffs or debuffs. Now had I cast, uh, let's head over to my skills here, had I cast Soul Harvest, I'd get um, maximum mana boosted, things like that and for all the different enemies. Once you cast that and you see that just above your health bar, you'll see the different bonuses and buffs. It'll be right next to uh, the gargantuan icon here. Those little things there, you wonder, well, what is that exactly doing? Well, if you're playing single player, popping in here and bringing up X, actually, you know, popping in here poison, uh, poisons, ha, sorry, pauses the game, and you can check and see what's going on. If you're playing multiplayer, you probably don't want to do it right in the middle of something, but you can check it out and say, oh, that buff is giving me this. So if you're not sure what's coming from where and how much, that's a handy place to check it out as well. So I rambled a little bit during this one. I do apologize, but there was a lot to cover. And if anything you take away from this particular video, it is make sure you do pay attention to those advanced stats later on in the game. Early on, you're going to be leveling, getting new items, things like that. It won't matter nearly as much. 
But once you're hitting 65 and up and you're starting to plateau in damage, and especially once you're at 70 and you're trying to work your way up through the different torment difficulties, checking in there for what's going on is really going to help you out. So if you have any questions, post them down in the comments, suggestions, things like that. Great to hear them. Check out the text edition of all this over on the Diablo official forums. We'll have a link for that. And uh, check out our later videos. We're going to be doing kind of at this point just ones that uh, stand out to us. This covers pretty much all the basic guides. So anything else that you have suggestions, also let us know. And we look forward to seeing you on the next one.